This video will demonstrate how to ingest data in an SQLite database in an incremental fashion using Versatile Data Kit. Versatile Data Kit, or VDK for short, is a data engineering framework which allows users to develop, deploy, run, and manage data jobs. In the previous videos in our YouTube channel, we showed how to ingest and transform data using data jobs. With this video, we want to demonstrate how to ingest data incrementally and introduce the concept of data job properties. What is incremental ingestion and why use it? This is one of the main ETL loading techniques, which takes only the delta between a source and a target database and ingests only the new or updated records. In contrast, a full load would ingest all data from a source, regardless of whether it's already available in the target. In case of regularly executing pipelines, incremental ingestion is an efficient technique for storage optimization and decreasing data load time, plus it reduces to completely eliminates data duplication and the time needed for further data processing. VDK makes incremental ingestion straightforward to implement through the usage of the so-called data job properties. Job properties allow the safe storage of data job state or credentials on VDK's cloud control service. A user could create any number of properties which are specific to a given data job and will be saved automatically onto VDK's control plane once the job executes successfully, either on the cloud or locally. If you have not done so already, you can install Versatile Data Kit by running the following command. In my case, VDK is already installed, so we see some verification messages printed. To be able to use data job properties, you also need to install VDK control service. Please note that there are some prerequisites that you need to install in advance. You can see them on the screen. Ingestion requires us to set environment variables for the type of database we will be ingesting into, the ingestion method, source and target, as well as the URL that VDK control service API uses. We are now ready to create our data job. By running VDK create help, you could explore all available command parameters. We specify the job name and path on the local machine where job files will be stored. Optionally, we could also specify a team to better organize jobs in case multiple people work on them. The default team name under which all data jobs are created, unless specified otherwise, is Taurus. Let's quickly look through the initial data that we will be ingesting. We will use a local SQLite database as source and specifically a simple table with three columns, an ID, description and reported date. The date field is important for the incremental ingestion part. We will use it later on to identify the records that need to be incrementally ingested. After the initial load takes place, we will enrich this data source with new records. Now let's look through the contents of our data job. In general, VDK allows the usage of both Python and SQL files. This data job, however, contains only one Python step. It also has a configuration file containing the data job deploy settings and a readme file. Looking through the Python logic, to determine whether to perform a full or incremental load, we use the last date job property. If this is the first time that the data job is run, last date is initialized to 1st of January 1900, a date long ago in the past that would ensure all records from the source table will be fetched. On the other hand, if the data job was run previously, we would take the property value already stored in VDK's control plane from the last run. This is done using VDK's getProperty method. Next, we use VDK's built-in execute query method against the source SQLite database, which we configured in the environment variables earlier, and use the last date variable to fetch only records after the given date. We then extract the column names and post the data for ingestion using VDK's send WR data for ingestion method. The last step is to save in the last date property the maximum value of the reported date column that was just ingested. This will ensure that only new records will be inserted into the target the next time that the job is run. To run the data job, we execute the VDK run command together with the job's directory. The logs indicate that it ran successfully. We see that during the execution of the Python file, the last date property was replaced with its corresponding value in the SQL statement fetching data from the source. There's also a message informing us that three records were successfully ingested into the target. To verify this, let's check the contents of the target database table 
using the execute query method again, but this time directly in the terminal. Before running the query, we need to reset the VDK SQLite file environment variable to the target database. So far, it was pointing at the source database table. The output matches what we expect to see. Now let's check what happens when the source table is enriched with new data. As you can see, there are two additional records added in the source as indicated by the reported date column. We reset the SQLite environment variable to the source database and rerun the data job. The value of the job property has been replaced with the last reported date from the initial ingestion step and the output prints that two new records were ingested. We verify by querying the target table again. As we can see, only the new records were indeed added to the target. There is no duplication of the historical data. VDK offers a useful command to interact with the properties of a given data job directly through the terminal. We can list, add, delete and overwrite properties without the need to rerun a job. As you can see in the list of properties we've just outputted, the value of the last date property of the incremental ingestion job reflects the last reported date in the ingested data. This completes our demonstration of incremental ingestion using VDK data job properties. For more information on Versatile Data Kit, visit the GitHub repository linked in the description or join the VDK Slack channel.